um, we have Mariella and Juliet in the exotic animal room, and then we're looking at our outdoor aviary, which is one of my favorite uh, things at the Carity Point Shelter. Um, we're in San Mateo. Yeah. So that's where the majority of our pigeons are living right now, right? Yes. We do have one at our Lanto Center for Compassion. Um, his name is Tufty, and he's an Indian fantail pigeon. He's also our pet of the week uh, this week. So definitely check him out. He's a gorgeous bird. <laughs> Very beautiful. Very fancy. Yeah. Actually, speaking yeah. of fancy pigeons, I'm going to dive in. How do you know the difference between, like, how do we know if a pigeon is a pet pigeon or a wild pigeon? Because we also have the Wildlife Care Center. I'm sure they see pigeons as well, but they're different than. Yeah. Yeah, so there are some differences between them. For the most part, you can tell if it's a domestic pigeon, if it looks like popward. Popward is a solid white pigeon. You don't see those out um, in, uh, in the wild, generally, unless they accidentally escape. And they stand out like a sore thumb. So you really, if you see one of these guys, that you we really need to help them by catching them in some way, corralling them, uh, maybe even setting up a little trap for them. Um, little, uh, this little pigeon here, who's not solid white, um, he's got some black speckling, some black wing tips, black tail. Um, also, uh, he was wearing a band when he came in. Mm -hmm. So birds that wear, wear bands um, are usually pet birds. Um, they're pet birds, and uh, we're able to trace some of these bands back to the owners or the clubs that are that either own them or they're participating in certain competitions. Um, that we're not really fans of, it, yeah. it does kind of put them in danger. Um, and so when you see solid white ones or solid colors, those are usually your fancy pigeons that um, they're pet, pet birds for sure. So browns, um, solid white, a lot, there's some solid black ones um, or multicolored, very specific color patterning or mutations. Um, you might see out there, this pigeon here um, is also wearing a band, but it's not a traceable band. Um, mm -hmm. So traceable bands, they usually will be registered on a website. And so you'll see initials, you'll see numbers, um, and maybe a specific, um, what is it, abbreviations for certain clubs. And these are nationally or um, local clubs, um, so we have seen bands that link to Southern California, that link to Northern California, Nevada. Germany. Uh, we had a German, had a German band uh, in the past. So that's that's one way you can tell. We do check their wings to see if they're clipped. Sometimes these birds come in injured um, and that's a reason for them not flying. But other times it could be that they just have clipped wings and that might also be a sign of them being owned by somebody. Okay. Um, okay. That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it works sort of like a microchip. Well, sort of, and that you don't have to scan it. You just yeah, read yeah. Not, it's more. It's kind of like a like a like an ID or a collar, like a, a pet wearing a tag. Yeah. Um, but they are some of those bands are FID, um, RDF. You know those those bands that they'll um, they'll register uh, some type of uh, mechanism that. We'll tell the owner that they arrived home. Yes. Okay. It's an RFID yeah. chip, and if they get home, usually an owner will get a notification mm -hmm. on those on those bands because they're either training for races um, or certain competitions yeah. like that. Yeah. That's fascinating. I hadn't even <laughs> thought about the fact that, of course, there would be clubs for people who do racing and who compete. Yeah. Yeah, I think that so. they, we would have them in this area, but we do obviously. Yeah, have, there's quite a few of them. Uh, we do get a lot from the East Bay uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a lot of these birds are not claimed by their owners. A lot of them come in injured, they're starving. Mm -hmm. We don't recommend doing any of the sporting or competition. Um, or live release. We live get, releases. We get a lot yeah. from live releases from weddings and mm -hmm. different kinds of ceremonies. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but that's in danger. Release of the birth. white doves at the end. We don't recommend it. Yeah. 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 But then they don't know how to take care of themselves. So yeah. they end up here. Yeah. Because again, they are not wild animals. I want to emphasize mm -hmm. that in, big, in large part because when I was talking to my friends about talking to you guys about pigeons, I had a lot of people ask, mm -hmm. why don't they just fly in the wild why don't they just 
No, no, no. There's over 250 breeds of domestic wow. pigeons. So just like there is dogs and cats, there's all kinds of fancy breeds. The same thing uh, with pigeons. These guys have been domesticated for thousands of years, you know, just like dogs and cats. So they don't know how to fence themselves. They strictly rely on us. They're um, master panhandlers in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, they know humans equal food. Yeah. So they really can't survive without us. Yeah. Okay. Well, good to know. Um, so if you were to take a pigeon home, how do you prepare? What kind of a home oh, do you live in? It's, it's actually, it's fairly easy to set up for bringing a pigeon home. Um, you want to get, if you're going to have your pigeon be an indoor pigeon, which um, a lot of them do really well in those types of situations, um, really you're looking for a cage that's um, at least three by two by, by two. two. Yeah. Um, and you want to have, you know, a big area for them. You can set it up with towels or blankets, or if you want to get like newspaper or puppy pads to line the bottom. Um, and then food and water dish, um, you want to have uh, basically an access or an area for them to like bathe themselves um, and, you know, little toys and things for them to do. They really like to, um, hay bins. yeah, they like hay bins, things that they can uh, take nesting material from. Yeah. Um, so we'll like stack up hay and a little thing on the side of their cage that they can pull out um, so they can do their natural like nesting behaviors. Um, so we'll give them little things to forage with, um, mm -hmm. areas where you can clip greens, um, maybe a little mirror or two for them. And they obviously and love shelves. Absolutely. This one. They love flat shelves. They mm -hmm. can like lounge on them easily. Um, they can chew and court their partner on yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Perches. There's yeah. a lot of different things that you can get for them. Um, so you can kind of have fun with it then. You can. Yeah. I think the most most fun part is setting up the the enclosure in the beginning. Yeah. I think that's the most fun part. Um, and if you're doing an aviary or um, if you want to have pigeons in an aviary outside, um, they do really well in that kind of situation too. Um, depending on how many birds you want to get, you can kind of um, decide what <laughs> what size your aviary is. Um, and go from there and you can put nest boxes and you can make really cool perches out of like uh, PVC. We have an entire stand in our aviary that's uh, PVC pipe and rope. You can really get creative with uh, the things you can make for them, which mm -hmm. is great. So you can kind of see the little mirror hanging down on the back of the aviary there. On yeah. The nest box, which is super cute. It is great yeah. when you go out and see these guys that half the time they're looking at themselves. I feel like yeah, they, 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 recognize, uh, they love they standing do. in front of a mirror. If you meet Tufty, our Indian fantail pigeon, his best friend is the mirror. Mm -hmm. So he didn't really make a lot of friends in the aviary, but he's always found sitting in front of one of these mirrors. He's so. his own best friend. And, <laughs> and that's enrichment for him too. So mm -hmm. that's just one way of keeping him entertained. And then the other way is, you know, like if you have them indoors, you can have them in a pigeon harness. In yes, I'm going to ask you about pigeon pants. <laughs> <laughs> so Hawkins here is wearing maybe an older fashion. He's a smaller bird, so this one does really well with him. It's lined with um, with a liner, so you can just change out the liner maybe every three hours uh, and have them uh, in your house. You don't have to worry about the mess that they could potentially make. Um, that's one of the, the inconveniences, I guess, about having them indoors is that they can, you know, eliminate in your home, but any bird can, and there's a lot of indoor birds or parrots out there, um, but this makes it more fun. These are more fun birds, I think, to own because, you know, they're not going to, you know, bite your face. They or can scream. Or <laughs> scream in your ear or ruin your furniture. You know, yeah. they're not going to chew on your wooden chairs or your coffee table or your sofa, um, they're just gonna lounge around. They're gonna hang out on whatever shelves you might have. Um, and they're not gonna make a mess if they're wearing their harness. So mm -hmm. this is a great way to provide enrichment for birds and have a first time pet bird. You know, they're they're really the ideal pet bird. Um, parrots are great, I love parrots, but they're, they're a little bit more complicated. They're still considered wild animals in your home. Well, these guys have been domesticated for thousands of years. Um, so they're just like dogs and cats. They can get along with dogs and cats, 
um, especially if your dog or cat is is really well trained um, or your, your cat is just, you know, a really mellow cat. You don't really want to have a brand new kitten yeah. in your <laughs> home. Yeah. You know, it's going to chase the bird around. But if you have an older pet cat that's used to other animals, they generally will kind of hang out together. They won't really, you always want to supervise them. Of course, you don't want to leave them unsupervised. Uh, in a space like that, but um, they can definitely do well in a multi-pet household. Absolutely, yeah. They, they learn to be respectful of each other, which is kind of Yeah, they adapt to almost any situation. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. parrots are too high-strung for, you know, multi-pets, and they have to be the only pet in the home, or they're a one-person one person <laughs> bird. bird. Yeah. These guys will do well with any, almost Absolutely. anybody. <laughs> That's so and you don't have to worry them about them hurting children, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. They have little soft bills. Soft um, little bills. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to grab on. <laughs> Would you mind, uh, camera person, camera person, I'm not sure who this is, but can you zoom in a little bit on one of the birds? Or maybe turn the camera around just so we can say hi. <laughs> is this Hawkward or is this? This is Hawkins, Hawkins. so also a heart attack victim. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so he, he's one of our mellow kids. He's always been really sweet. Um, not every bird is going to be this calm. Some of them are going to take more work than others. Sure. Uh, but uh, Hawkward and, and Hawkins have always been pretty confident and pretty mellow around um, people. So we knew that they would be perfect, you know, ideal pets for, for the pigeon pants. Mm -hmm. um, and even though they're skittish birds, this kind of works as like a thunder coat in a sense. Oh, it keeps nice. them a little bit calmer. It changes their behavior a little bit. Some of them um, may be a little off balance initially. They might walk backwards because it's kind of weird. They will adapt within minutes. Uh, I've had them adapt in as little as two minutes uh, or instantly, to be honest. Hawkward was instantly great in his pants and so was little Hawkins here. I love that so much. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we got to see a little, a little bit of the quick Yeah. Um, what do they eat? Uh, they can eat a variety of different things. Um, Julia, do you want to? Yeah. Uh, so it's a, a good variety for um, any bird is always really important. A good varied diet. Uh, we do a mixture uh, here. We have pigeon, they have pigeon and dove seed, which is great. But then we also like to do um, a wide variety of veggies um, every day for them. Um, they really like their greens. You can clip them to the side of the cage and they'll pick at it all day long. Um, we, you know, we can shred vegetables, you know, the root veggies like carrots and stuff. You can shred those up, put them in their dish. Um, lots of different uh, vegetables and fruits and opportunities for them to get uh, good nutrition is great. Um, and then just as a staple, having the, the basic um, pigeon seed as well. They also have pigeon pellets, which are more of like a concentrated nutritious um, diet. And in a lot, a lot of birds, it takes them a little bit more time to get used to the pellet. Okay. Um, but once they're used to it and they know that it's food, um, I mean, pigeons are great. They will eat almost anything. So they're <laughs> really, they, they adapt really well to that. Once they realize that it's, it's food they're like oh okay great yeah. um nice so yeah so they're good they're good eaters for sure yeah. well i have a question too in the comments um do they need exercise and if they do how do they get it yeah so in the aviary you know they can fly around uh, mm -hmm. as much as they want they're um like our pigeon uh, adoption partner rescue says they're masters of the leisure arts um, so they love to lounge around, but they do want the ability to fly. So aviary is great. We have a 10 by 5 aviary that they can fly around in. But again, the pigeon pants, you know, they get the ability to yep, fly safely in their home. Um, and maybe just a few hours. You don't want to do too much too fast, but you can do uh, maybe 10 minutes to start with and then gradually increase the time. And we would say maybe up to three hours they can mm -hmm. hang out and yeah lounge around uh, they're not going to fly constantly in your house uh, but they will you know fly from place to place mm -hmm. some birds will trust you so much that they'll follow you from room to room yeah. so if you're you know kind of walking around they're going to get their exercise that way yeah. uh, if we have a bird in a cage like this we want to open the door for them and give them some time out so that they can stretch their wings uh, flap if they want and some of them you'll see will flap 
uh, for maybe a couple, uh, like 10, 20 seconds. Okay. They'll get their exercise that way. Um, but yeah, it, it is a good idea to let them come mm-hmm. out and, and, and stretch. And, yeah, stretch their wings. Yeah, and exercise that mm-hmm. way. I have another good one. Uh, how do you get most mm-hmm. of your pigeons? Do you get them off the streets? And then this person also was asking, how do we know whether it's a wild pigeon, which we did touch on briefly in the beginning, but usually you said color. Uh, generally speaking, the solid yeah. colors are the speckled yeah. guys. We pretty much know. Yeah, the yeah. And there's fancy, there's the fancy breeds too. So you'll see those exaggerated features, exaggerated feathered feet, uh, tiny little uh, faces or beaks even. Um, very fancy um, patterns. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe all the different patterns that there are, but yeah. but yeah, there are many. But usually, solid colors are mm. one, and you know, all white birds mm. are are de- or all white pigeons definitely stand out and are not wild birds. Definitely. So not and and hawkbird wearing a band. If they're wearing bands, they belong to somebody. They were raised in captivity. Yeah. If a bird that came in that looked like this, he is a little bit more of a lavender color. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see yeah. him very well. Yeah, but but he's almost, he's like almost the natural wild colors. But he's almost a natural wild color, mm-hmm. but it, it came in with a band. Mm-hmm. So that's how we know it's somebody's pet bird. Yeah. Uh, there are other features if you're really familiar with looking at pigeons, pet pigeons all day and the homing pigeons that can look very similar to the wild birds. Um, Their faces are a little bit more aerodynamic. They have larger uh, sears or wattles um, than the the city pigeons. You'll see tiny little wattles or sears, the white uh, just above their beak, tends to be a little bit smaller. So these guys, their head is more Mm arrow-like. In a sense, while the uh, little uh, or the the city pigeons tend to have like a small face, but not ne- necessarily look so pointy or or large. Um, but you kind of have to have both of them side by side to tell. Or if you're Julia or I, you're going to see them so frequently <laughs> that we can we can, we can just know <laughs> yeah. we can spot them from you know you know the other side of the room. We're like, oh, that's not ours. <laughs> yeah. So how so. do they come into us? So usually stray, we'll, we'll get them in over the counter. A lot of the time uh, they've been injured or they're super skinny and hungry. Um, a lot of the time the king pigeons, when they're used, because the king pigeons are the all white, like quintessential beautiful white doves mm. um, that people use in live releases, um, they can't find food on their own. So a lot of the time we'll get these guys in stray. They'll be super skinny, super hungry. They come in, eat a ton, feel a lot better afterwards. But um So that's usually we're getting them in stray when they are um, injured. Uh, A lot of the time it's hawk attacks. Um, We're getting them in from the pigeon racing um, events that they help that they hold um, just because when when the pigeons go out up into the air, they don't really have any protection out there. Um, So they'll get grabbed by a wild animal, a hawk, whatever, Mm. and then, you know, a good Samaritan will find them and bring them in here. um, And then we can take care of them from there. But that's usually how we're how we're getting them in or somebody will call us and say they found, um, you know, a domestic looking bird in their yard and we'll send animal control out to go pick them up. but that's usually that's usually where we're where we're getting them from. Yeah, we don't really get a lot of uh, surrendered pigeons, yeah. to be honest. Uh, I think uh, our Indian fantail was probably the only surrendered pet bird, and it was because he didn't have any friends there, and I guess he was um, maybe sur- harassing a chicken <laughs> in the home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Living but otherwise. Yeah, lots lots of stray birds. Lots of really well meaning well meaning people find them um, after they're released. You know, they're purchased in like food markets oftentimes because people feel bad they're gonna be eaten for food. Uh, the king pigeons, uh, so they'll end up you know just releasing them, and that's not really helping them either. That's really good to know. That's really really yeah. good to know. Yeah, don't uh, buy them. <laughs> don't buy pigeons. Yeah, no, not the ones that, not unless you're going to plan on keeping it as a pet, (laughs) Um, and if you are trying to save it from that situation, yeah, but it's, it's, I think it's a, it's an uphill, you know, battle, it's it's really hard to save them all, Mm -hmm. they're sold just like chickens are for food, only, yeah, they're, they're in live food markets. Yeah, so interesting. 
Yeah. I'm learning a ton. I did have one other question about uh, mirrors and whether domesticated pigeons need mirrors. We talked a bit, a bit about how, especially the, the fantail likes his mirror. Um, yes, is yes. there a benefit to having a mirror in an enclosure other than just enrichment? Yeah. Well, we feel like it helps them not feel so alone if they're single mm -hmm. pigeons. Uh, it is primarily enrichment and they seem to calm down quite a bit, especially in a scary place like the shelter. They don't know where they are. They don't recognize any of this space. A lot of them live maybe outdoors in a, in a crowded coop uh, if they're being sold for food and or didn't spend a lot of time in an environment that uh, that had a lot of human interaction, to be honest. Uh, a lot of these are raised uh, for food or, you know, to show or in competition. So they are in crowded situations um, and then released. So it's kind of weird for them to be in a new space, but the mirror kind of seems to help calm them down. Nice. Then I think let's do one last question. Um, I, we've sure. gotten we've covered a lot of ground thank you so much and thank you so much again to everyone who's been watching thank you to our donors that's Yay. fabulous thank you so much um <laughs> what makes someone the perfect pigeon adopter what do you look it's, for honestly anyone can be a perfect pigeon adopter right. all it takes is is just reading a teeny bit about them there's a really good resource online uh, www.pigeonrescue.org has everything you could think of all your questions questions would be answered on this website uh, so if you uh, are new to birds you're an experienced bird person a pet pigeon can really be the perfect you know pet for any type of owner to be honest they can be set up in a in a dog uh, crate in a large dog wire crate you can set up shelves in there and it's super simple to um keep them and 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 keep make them happy to be honest absolutely yeah. oh wait i've got so sorry <laughs> I was gonna say last one, but then we've got a, a couple really good ones. Do they need to go to the vet? And how do how can you tell if it's a boy or a girl pigeon? Oh, we've got some action in the aviary. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I see that. Uh, so they they should go to the vet just to be evaluated uh, and make sure that they don't have anything going on with them. Sometimes you can't always tell. They are really great at hiding their illnesses uh, or any injuries that they might have. Even this bird that came in, um, they're like, I said, oh, is it injured? They said no, and I checked it out and I found four scabs on it. Oh, wow. So even though maybe it was, a, you know, grabbed by something a while ago, it was missing a couple patches of feathers. Mm -hmm. The wounds are healing already. They are very minor. Uh, but we usually will let a vet know that, like, hey, we found this bird with these scratches or whatever and we might have to put them on medication sometimes if they're already old and they've been healing great they may not need anything uh, but it is always good to get them evaluated especially if you're going to put them in with other birds uh, we do have an avian vet here that comes in twice a week and she'll check out our birds especially if we feel that something is wrong with them if they're fluffed if they're lethargic if they're not really acknowledging you mm -hmm being in the room or right in front of them or look just really sleepy most of the time, mm -hmm. there could be a secondary issue going on there and they're just really trying to mask it. Uh, the other question was? Uh, so I have someone in the comment section who just uh, recently rescued a pigeon, would like to get another to keep it company and she's wondering, I assume she, um, they're wondering how to tell uh, whether their pigeon is a boy or a girl and does that matter? Oh. Sometimes it matters. Uh, females can get along really great. Uh, it is really hard to tell if there's a male or a female if you don't have another one to compare. Mm -hmm. We have our wonderful aviary outside, and our known males tell us who is who is a potential Girl, female. Yeah, yeah <laughs> the so. boys will tell you. The boys, the boys will do their will... little foot foot dance, and yeah. you will know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, but it, it is hard. It's hard to just uh, by sight tell if it's a boy or a girl. You really, um, with birds, I mean, there you really have to do a, um, like a blood test essentially yeah. to find out if they're male or female. Um, so the or easier, or, or if they lay eggs, there you go, it's a girl. Um, the easier way to figure out if it's a boy or a girl is to get another 
pigeon essentially and see how they are, you know, get another pigeon where like the males here, we know they're males, the females here, we know they're females because we've seen them, you know, do their little courtship dances and pair up. And um, so that's kind of how you can tell is get another bird, put them together and see, see the behavior. You got to watch the behavior and see what they do. Mm -hmm. Some birds, some little tiny features. If you have some like we do in the aviary, you might notice that the males have really thick necks really fluffy looking necks um, and some of the females might have really slender necks that could be one sign it's not guaranteed uh there could be some really manly females out there just you know like like a lot of different <laughs> there's yeah it's just animals, like people so, it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we can't say 100 percent, but yeah if you get one that's laying eggs that's either 100 percent no. <laughs> sure that's a female uh if there is, you know, a match, they'll, they'll let you know right away. Yeah. They'll start, you know, cuddling and feeding each other. And we're more than happy to work with people Absolutely. that, that want to find the right pet uh, personality for their pet pigeon. We can do pigeon dating. Absolutely. We can do pigeon dating. Pigeon okay, dating. Pigeon. <laughs> we love pigeon dating. Well, yeah, pigeon dating. I'm going to let you guys get back to your day. I know you're busy. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. I have a super nice comment from Truffle Biscotti. One, I love your name. Um, she said, thank you for dispelling the myths about pigeons being dirty street urchins. Yeah, <laughs> no. no it's, so good. Yeah, <laughs> if their environment is clean, they will stay clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. I truly, yeah. I truly appreciate it, you guys. Uh, just so everyone knows, I will be saving this video. We'll have it up later on our YouTube channel so you can use it as a reference. Um, and thank you again for joining us. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you guys. Yeah, have thank a you. wonderful afternoon. Thank Enjoy the sun. Enjoy yeah. the aviary. Mm -hmm. And again, part of the reason we're doing this, the most important reason why we're doing this is because right now uh, we are running a super fun promo called OK Cupid. Talk about pigeon dating. Um, so <laughs> our adoption fees are waived currently for pigeons. Uh, so if you're curious, now might be the perfect time to bring home the perfect first time bird. Just a thought. And we'll help Just you do everything that you need to do. We'll help you out with caging even if, if necessary. Sometimes we get, you know, uh, a couple of things that we can, you know, even donate to the cause. So, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We'll make it easy. Yeah. Come take a look at a pigeon. Think about Thank it. You. Set up something. <laughs> um, have Thanks, a wonderful Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>